So I've been working on Kubernetes for a while now. And one thing um, that if you want to work on Kubernetes that is not straightforward is setting up the Kubernetes development environment. Um, and it is changing all the time. So I'm much, this uh, tutorial might get obsolete very quickly, but I'm going to go ahead and show how it's done, how I do it right now. Um, there's some distribution specific stuff like the package manager and stuff like that. I'm going to try to keep that to a minimum so that uh, this demo will apply as, mo as much as it can to all distributions. I'm going to be doing it on Fedora 25. So there's some steps that you'll only do here or you'll have to use your own package manager with the package names that for your distribution. Um, but hopefully this will be useful. So what I've got here is a Fedora 25 cloud instance running. I haven't done anything to it, so I'm starting from scratch. Uh, the first thing you want to do is there are certain things in the build environment that do not react well to SC Linux. So um, you're going to want to turn that off. And uh, you probably want to make it persistent. So you go into the config file and change it. One thing you might notice is I'm doing this as root. Um, the development environment will do, especially if you want to run your uh, cluster locally uh, for development purposes, it's going to need root access. And I find, especially if you've got a dedicated machine just for Kubernetes development, just a, you know, a dedicated VM, then you know, it's not secure or anything, but it, it will uh, ease your pain um, when things you know, don't work because they don't have the permissions or something like that. If doing it as root makes it simpler. So uh, let me go ahead and go in, try to get through these quickly since this only applies to Fedora here. We're going to switch this to permissive. And that'll make uh, the, our SC Linux disablement persistent across reboots. So the next thing we're going to do is install the required software. Um, I meant to cache the metadata ahead of time so this didn't take too much time, but. Hopefully it won't take too long. You can see here that we're installing Git. We're going to need that to clone from GitHub. Uh, make and GCC, the, uh, the build environment uses make files. Uh, there are some things that need GCC. Wget is not needed directly by Kubernetes, but I'm going to use it here in a second to get the Golang binaries down from the, um, from the Go, Golang website. Uh, I'm not going to install the distribution version here just because I find there's more uniformity if you download it from Golang. And up until recently, Fedora had something compiled out of its version of Golang for um, FIPS reasons that uh, causes Kubernetes not to build in that version. So I'm just used to pulling it down from the Golang website. And then, of course, Docker. When you run your cluster locally, Docker is the runtime that Kubernetes uses under the covers, and it's going to run your pods locally. So the next thing to do is to in, uh, start and enable Docker. Then we're going to pull down the Golang um, packages. You can get these yourself if you just go Golang. There it was. Do downloads. And I, I just got that link from here. I just right clicked and saved link as. You can also get these instructions from the installation instructions here. The tar command I'm about to run is in the documentation right here. So. Let's go ahead and download that. Then we are going to extract it to user local. All the Go stuff goes in user local slash Go. The next thing I'm going to do is update my bash RC with things that are going to be needed for this environment. Some of them make sense now. Some of them will make sense further along in the tutorial. But I'm going to put those in. So the Go root, this is where uh, all the, you know, the Go, the Go runtime is. Um, I'm going to put my go path at under my home directory as uh, slash go. And then um, this is you know, to the path to the to the actual go executable. These are things that you if you do like a go get, then that's where those executables go. And then this comes in later when um, if we run a local cluster, we're going to need an etcd as well. So there's a little script inside Kubernetes to download and run that for you and it will require this path. So we'll save that and refresh our environment. The next thing we're gonna do is set up our uh, go path. So um, this is just, you know, uh, go under my home directory is the go path source. Th these are all like, these are just go-isms. So now I'm inside here. This is where I'm gonna clone, this is the location I'm gonna clone Kubernetes to. 
So in order to do that, I'm going to go through the whole process here. It's a little different if you haven't forked the Kubernetes repo before, but I'm at the, you know, the upstream Kubernetes GitHub page here. So the first thing you're going to do, want to do is hit fork. This will look different for you if you haven't forked it yet. I'm just going to go into my existing fork here. Um, and what you'll need to do is um, generate, a, uh, if, you, if you have a key already, you can install it on your dev system. If you don't, then you can generate one. Um, but you're going to need this to be able to write to your um, GitHub fork of Kubernetes. So we're just going to create a pre-shared key here. Let's get the public key. Then we're going to come into our profile here. Let's see, settings. Go over here to SSH and GPG keys, add a new key, call this kubedev, and we'll put this in there like that, add SSH key. All right. Then, now that we've got our key in there, we can uh, clone our fork. So that will be done with this. So for me, you know, that that's got my username in it, it's going to be different for you. So hopefully this won't take too long here. The Kubernetes repo is quite big, about 350 megabytes in, in Git objects. And it's expanded on disk, I imagine it's even larger. Now you may notice that in, in my normal Git workflow, Origin is the upstream project and I name my, my personal fork uh, the GitHub remote, but there are scripts in Kubernetes that uh, are that build these opinions in that the upstream Kubernetes is a remote called upstream and that your private fork is the origin. So that's the way I'm setting it up here. So we've got our clone. We're going to CD into the Kubernetes directory. The first thing we're going to do is add the upstream remote. So that's get remote add upstream with the HTTPS link to the upstream project. Then we're gonna fetch upstream so that we can get the branches. And what I like to do is retarget my local master branch to target upstream rather than my master branch on my fork since I don't do any work on my master branch uh, on my fork, but I do care about what uh, upstream master looks like. So we're gonna retarget uh, our master branch here using this command. So set upstream to upstream master. And then we uh, are going to, we're on the master branch right now. So if we do get status, we're on master, but you can see that we're way behind upstream now because I haven't upgraded, I haven't uh, pushed updates to my personal forks master branch in a long time. So we'll do a git pull here to uh, basically move the head of our branch to where upstream master is. So these are things that might change uh, the, these next couple of steps. You have to download some dependencies just uh, on your own. These are things that the build environment uses and this list is likely to change over time. So one's called go bin data. And so you can just do go get and it gets that. And then the other thing is uh, Cloudflare's SSL uh, utility. This one took a little while to download before, but um, oh, there you go. Three periods. <laughs> yeah, goes got a particular way of things. Anyway, so this is a cloud for cloud flares SSL utility, and this is what is used to uh, generate the SSL certificates between the components when you run in a local development environment using a script that I'm gonna show in just a second. I am not sure what about this takes so long. <laughs> there we go. So the next thing we need to do is, um, and again, I'm not gonna show how to make changes, I'm just gonna show how to get a local development cluster up and running on this machine. Um, I might make another tutorial later about actual, the actual workflow in uh, submitting a code change. But that's, the, that's not necessarily unique to Kubernetes. Uh, the next thing to do is to run this. Uh, this will pull down etcd 
um, and uh, build the executable. And here's where uh, you know that uh, path that we put in our bash RC earlier. This is it right here. Um, and that just lets when the when this next script runs, it lets it bring up etcd on its own. So this is the this is the magic here. Hack local up cluster. This will build Kubernetes as it exists in your working directory right now and start up a cluster with all the pieces needed. Um, and so if you're running to test test your uh, changes, then this I use this all the time. So this will take. Um, this is a machine with seven gigabytes of RAM and eight vCPUs. So it'll probably take um, five minutes or so. So I'll cut back when it's done. Okay, so that finished. Um, you'll see that it, it doesn't return, uh, it doesn't start it as a daemon. It's actually running in the foreground here, the, the, um, the, the cluster made up of several components. The API server, controller manager, proxy scheduler, and the kubelet are all running. So um, I'm going to open up another terminal here and we will let's see what we can do here. Here. And uh, let me get into this instance real quick. Eh. Okay, so if we run this uh, command here, this basically links to the uh, to the version of Cube Control that, that is in your um, that you just built, and I can show you where that is. I like to set the path to that output directory directly. That way, I don't have to type this long line in. But if we do uh, that, get nodes, you can see that there there's one Kubernetes node running locally here, and this is kind of this development cluster that I've been talking about. And all the output artifacts go under um, underscore output. And if you go in here, you can see that um, the all, all the components of Kubernetes, all the server side components anyways, um, the node and the API server, controller, controller manager and proxy and stuff like that are all built into Kuber, into Hypercube. They're kind of a, it's a one, one binary to rule them all. And then the cube control is here. So you can run that directly if you want to on the local cluster, get nodes, and that's the same as doing this up here. So that should get you out of the gate. Um, it, it, it definitely wasn't straightforward the first time I did this, so hopefully this was helpful.